Good morning, everybody. My name is Javier Rodriguez, and I'm super excited to be with you here this morning on this 403B 457 workshop that we're obviously doing virtually because of COVID and so on. But uh, this is a workshop that we conduct all over the country for police officers and many, many other employees as well. But today we're going to focus on the 403B and the 457 plan. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to give you information to help ask yourself if what you have is the right product for you. And if the answer is yes, by all means, congratulations. But if it's not, uh, there's no better time to make an adjustment than today. So all I'm gonna do here today in the next couple of minutes, again, is give you food for thought. And so this is something that's going to help you make an informed decision as to what is best for you. And also give you some background as to how the 403B, 457, and even the 401K works so that you can get better clarity and understand what you have. You know, most uh, employees sign up for these plans at work in a few minutes time and then really get a formal introduction as to what it is that they're getting into. So I want to take the time to do that as well. I'm in a very unique position to share this with you. Uh, being a retired police officer myself, I know what a lot of you are going to go through someday and what some of you might be going through right now if you're already retired. My only intention here is to, again, give you enough information for you to ask yourself, do I want to know more? And I'm confident that by the end of this short webinar, with the emphasis on short, uh, the answer will be a resounding yes. All right, well, we're gonna start by sharing some information with you, again, as it relates to what the 457 plan and all this other good stuff relates to you as well. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, just so you know, we are approved vendors with the uh, LA Unified School District, even though we work with many police departments and school districts, this is specific to LA school police, and I am an independent representative for LSW, or Life of the Southwest, Midland National, North American, uh, North American Company, and other carriers that are approved with the LA Unified School District, managing hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in 403Bs, TSAs, and all that other good stuff. So we've been around for a long time. I've been working with the LA School Police specifically for about 12 years now, and have helped a lot of people, not just simply during their working years, but transition into retirement and beyond. Now, one of the key things to ask yourself is always the same thing here, which is what phase are you currently in? Because depending on what phase you're in, there are different variables that come into play. Now, you might be in the accumulation phase where you just started to work or you're still in the younger part of your career, if you would. And that's pretty cool because you have a lot of time. And the time is important, not just to accumulate money, but also to recover. Uh, depending on the type of product you are in, especially if you're in a variable type of product, market goes up, market goes down, your balance goes up and your balance goes down. And so that's not that big of a deal in the earlier phases of your career. But if you're in the red zone, meaning you're five to 10 years away from retirement, then time is no joke because of the simple fact that you have to make sure that you understand that you're not gonna have as much time to recover as much of your money in case the market turns on you because there are fixed annuities, there are variable annuities, there are, are you know all kinds of annuities out there. And so I wanna make sure you understand that depending on what phase you're in, it's gonna determine the kind of products that you would want to consider. Uh, maybe you're retired. And if you're retired, that's basically when the uh, musical chair game is playing and then the music stops. And where you are is where you're going to stay, meaning that you've accumulated as much money as you're going to accumulate. And now the game is not to accumulate money, but to preserve what you have and make it last. One of the good things is that police officers, from a statistical perspective, retire pretty young. The downside of that is that usually, other than their pension, the money runs out because they're so young and they want to make it last for as long as possible. And so again, whether you're in the accumulation phase, red zone, or you're retired, it's got to play a big role into what I believe you should be selecting as it relates to products as well. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is your risk tolerance. I talk to people all the time that really, really like to roll the dice with variable products, meaning that they are in the market, whether they be directly in stocks, mutual funds, and so on. And depending on the type of risk tolerance you have, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's not a good thing if you don't have a high risk tolerance. Like I said, depending on the phase that you are in right now, you wanna be cognizant of that because of the simple fact that you might not have as much time to recover. Uh, stock market returns are nice, but stock market losses are horrible. And I don't think I don't have to go too far back to when the last market crashed and took a lot of money with it. And most importantly, it took a lot of time. A lot of police officers had their money in there that saw it disappear. And now they were back to square one, not trying to make more money, but simply replace most of what they had lost, meaning that they ultimately lost time. And so I wanna make sure you understand that whatever your risk tolerance is, and if you don't know what your risk tolerance is, most people just say, ah, I'm high or I'm low or I'm medium, 
we actually have an assessment sheet I can send you absolutely free. And it will might surprise you that you think you're this, but you're really that based on certain factors that again, I can send to you at absolutely no cost to you. Now, one of the reasons that we are holding these workshops more often right now is because a lot of people are concerned with what the market is doing. The market is doing tremendously well, and it's great for your 403Bs, for your 457s and so on. But a lot of people are asking themselves, are we in a bubble? I mean, what do you think? And I don't really have a crystal ball to tell you what the market is going to do in the near future, but I will tell you that it is at an all-time highs, uh, at an all-time high. And from a historical perspective, all-time highs have always been followed by all-time lows. And so if you look at some of the concerns, and this I just Googled literally about 30 minutes ago, just to make a point, uh, this comes from Motley Fool, which is probably one of the top followed websites that deals with investments and so on. And it listed uh, 10, and this, you see the top five here, but if you look below, it says 10 reasons the stock market crash could crash, uh, the stock market could crash in 2021. And it just lists a lot of pretty legitimate stuff. I mean, and I'm not gonna get into it and I'm not gonna get political, but just remember, if you don't remember anything else, all time highs have always, always been followed by all time lows. That's just the cycle of the market. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a bad thing when it happens to us and we lose money, of course, but the market is very cyclical and you can make a lot of arguments as to why so many people are concerned for it. And if you are concerned for it, then this is the time for you to consider making a change if you can. And I say if you can, because annuities, if you already have an annuity, they come with something called surrender charges, meaning that if you bail on the company that has your 403B or 457, they're going to charge you uh, just that, a surrender charge. And it can be pretty, pretty big. That simply makes it not worthwhile transferring, even, you, even if you could get more benefits somewhere else. And so that's why I want to stress this to you that never jump to any decision. You got to make sure that you're in a position that you can either absorb or that you don't have any surrender charges would be the ultimate thing to do. Now, before I go any further, I want to make sure I clarify when I say 403B and 457 and sometimes even 401K, it's all interchangeable. They're all part of the same family of retirement savings plans, if you would, that the federal government offers. And the numbers and letters that you see there, 401k, 403b, 457, they just simply refer to the section of the IRS tax code that governs those plans. That's all it means. They all work the exact same way. And I'll show you a graphic here in the next slide or two to better illustrate that. Now, a lot of people tell me, well, I don't have a 403b, I have a TSA, which is a tax sheltered annuity. And the tax sheltered annuity is just a product. It's not a plan. And so if you have a 403b, that might open up a TSA, which is a tax sheltered annuity, which I'll show you why it's called tax sheltered in just one second, but it's all the same thing. So the plans are, are offered are usually determined by the employer. So if you work for a for-profit business, an actual company, let's say Xerox or something, well, then you're working for a for-profit corporation. So they're going to offer their employees a 401k. That's why you hear 401k so often, because that's what the majority of the people have in corporate America. If you work for a municipality like the city of LA or the county of LA and so on, then they offer what's called a 457, much better known as the FERC comp. And lastly, we have nonprofits. A nonprofit organization, they get to offer their employees what's called the 403B. All work the same way. Some have slight different rules. Uh, personally, I like the 457 a lot because it doesn't come with that 10% early withdrawal penalty that the other two come with, but they're good. They're all good. So depending on who you work for, it determines what plan is offered for you. And then we've got a few hybrids. Few employers can actually offer a combination of these plans. And for you guys, meaning LA School Police Department, what's unique about you is that for a while you had access to both a 403B and a 457. When I started working with you guys 12 years ago in gals, uh, you know, people were asking what's best. And I would always say that I would choose the 457 just because it doesn't come with a 10% early withdrawal penalty like the 403B does. And the 457 has pretty much gone away since then. And so now you're left with the 403B. And so what does that mean? Well, you have to understand that what you have is a plan that is intended to help you maximize your tax advantages. See, there's three phases to saving for retirement when it comes to taxes, if you would. You have the contribution phase, which is when you put money into the plan. You have the accumulation phase, when your money's sitting there, hopefully growing. And then the distribution phase, which simply means that's when you start to access the money. 
And there are ways for you to get tax-free contribution, tax-free accumulation, and tax-free distribution. The challenge though is that the IRS says you can only get two of the three. And so when it comes to a 43B, with this is the TSA 457, excuse me, 401k, this is what you're getting. You're getting a tax deductible contribution, meaning that if you make 100,000 this year and you put 10,000 into your 43B, you're only gonna pay taxes on 90,000 because that $10,000 contribution was tax deductible, which is pretty cool. And then you have the accumulation phase is when it sits there. And so that 90, 000, the 10,000 you put in there, it's going to hopefully grow based on the returns of whatever you chose. But as it grows and it earns interest, you don't pay any taxes on it. However, when you go and take that money out at the end during your distribution phase, then you pay taxes on the whole thing. And so you have to be very smart about that because when you touch that money, the ideal time to touch it, of course, is retirement. Even though most police officers, they touch their 403Bs and the deferred comps during their working years as well, as well in the form of loans. So that's a whole different ballgame I'll cover in just a little bit. So what you have is with the 403B, you got a tax-free contribution, you got a tax, a tax deductible contribution, tax deferred accumulation. And when you retire, it's time to pay the piper. And you got to be very careful because remember what I said earlier, police officers retire very young and we go off and do other things after we retire. And so that means that once you start to draw your pension, 100% of your pension is taxable. And then of course, any money you take out of your 403B, that's taxable as well. And then if you are doing anything on the side or side job or business, that income is taxable as well. And so you might find yourself with a lot of taxable income when you have the least write off So you have to be very, very careful about that. If you are in the early stages of your career, I encourage you to consider something like what you see here. This is the opposite. You don't get a tax break when you put your money in, but it's still gross tax deferred and it comes out tax free at the end. And that's another uh, talk for another day. But again, you only get two of the three. If somehow you're getting all three boxes, it's called income tax evasion and it's called a felony. So you don't want to do that. So be smart with your money, especially as it refers to taxes. So which one's best for you? Well, it depends. But for you, if you do have a 43B, you're under the red uh, circle that you see there and you have to accumulate the money like that. Uh, another great challenge that we have right now is the market. You heard me say that earlier. If I was to take a poll for you guys and ask you, do you think the market's going to continue higher forever? Or do you think it's going to at some point correct itself? Most people would say it's going to correct itself. And so this is where the products start to come into play. You know, there's really only two types of products that you can get out there. And I'm going to start with the first one. The first one is what's called the fixed annuity. Because remember, with the fourth 3B, there's no product. That's just a plan. You have to put it in a product. And the only product that you have available under the 43B plan, especially with LAUSD, are the fixed annuities. So a fixed annuity is just that. An annuity that just simply is fixed. It's not tied to the market. Nothing. It just sits there and earns what's called a declared interest rate. The downside, well, the good thing is that it's safe. A lot of people are going to cash right now. That's what they mean. They're, they're switching to cash because they want their principal to be safe. The downside is that they're not paying a whole lot. And that's one of the factors we look at when somebody says, I might consider rolling my 4.3B over to another product. Well, let's see what kind of interest rate you have right now. What, what is your declared interest rate or your minimum interest rate? If it's high, uh, you know, I spoke with a detective not too long ago that had a very, 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 very old annuity that ha had a guaranteed minimum of like four or 5%. That's minimum. I mean, we can't touch that. It would be a disservice to that uh, detective to do that. So we left it alone. But if it's lower or other factors kick in, it might make sense. So there's fixed products. And up until now, most people only know about variable annuities or variable products. And what I mean by this, of course, I'm referring to the fact that now we have variable products that are in the stock market. And now we're talking 100% you being at risk, meaning that your money goes up when the market goes up, but when the market goes down, your balance could dramatically go down. And again, it's not the end of the world, but if you are retired or in that red zone I was describing earlier, I mean, you could put a real hurt on you because you just simply will never have enough time to recover the losses. And that could be very, very damaging to your finances as well. The nice, uh, nice thing about variable products <clears throat> is that they do offer uh, upside potential that's much higher than anything that's just straight up fixed. And so 
Upside potential is very, very good, but there's that risk of principle that you could lose some theoretically, you could lose everything overnight. And so again, you know, when people ask me what, which one's best, the question is what's your risk tolerance and a bunch of other questions that go with it. But here's what I wanted to talk to you about here today. Something that most police officers don't know exists is something called an index product. And an index product is technically a fixed product. The one on the left-hand side, there's no third product, it's a fixed. However, it allows you part to participate in the returns of the market without having to put your money at risk. So when the, let's just say, S&P 500 goes up, you go up with it, but only to a certain cap or limit. But in return for that limit, when the market goes down, you don't lose a penny. You only go up and you never go down. You only move forward and you never move back. And that's pretty cool because it's amazing how many people I run into still that have just straight up fixed products making 1% or they have variable products where they are not even sleeping at night because they know that his all-time highs are always followed by all-time lows and they're worried about how much it's going to cost them in the end. Well, here with the index product, if you don't have an index annuity, I'm telling you right now, take a look at your options. And by the way, your options are shrinking. Many, many insurance companies are getting rid of a lot of the products because they anticipate what the market is going to do. If you ever really want to know what the market you think is going to do, follow the money. And a lot of insurance companies right now, I'm talking to one of them that went from 18 products down to six. And so thankfully other companies still have what I would call the very good indexed annuities that you can tap into, but you better move on it because banks and insurance companies know where the market's going, or at least they have a much better sense than we do. And so therefore that's why they're getting rid of a lot of the product we usually historically recommend to people as well. And then the last real big thing that I'm going to discuss with you today to just consider food for thought, like I said in the beginning, is what's called a lifetime income benefit writer. <clears throat> lifetime income benefit writer. And so one of the dangers for retirees is running out of money. Now, the good news is you'll have your pension for life. That's not an issue there. But remember that a pension is just a portion of what you used to make. And so we make up that shortage or that difference with some kind of 43B, 457 deferred comp. And so in this example, if I was to ask you, would you rather have a portion of what you used to make in retirement and throughout your retirement years? Or would you rather have close to 100% of what you used to make? Well, most people say 100%, please. And that's why you started a 43B if you have one. The downside is that unlike a pension that's guaranteed for the rest of your life, the annuity is not. The annuity would only continue for as long as the balance allows. Let me give you an example. Let's just say you have $200,000 in your 43B annuity when you retire. When you take out just 50,000, well, first of all, when you take out 50,000 from your 43B, you're gonna have to pay taxes on the 50. So just because you withdrew 50 doesn't mean you keep 50. You withdrew 50, you might keep 35 or whatever your tax rate might be. Let's just call it 35, but that's not the point. The point is if you have a $200,000 Four three B or annuity, and you take out fifty thousand in four years' time, your balance has reached zero, literally zero, and you're out of money from the four three B side of the house, and now you have just your pension to live off, which can be very very challenging, especially in today's high you know cost of living times. It's just simply sad. What the lifetime income benefit writer allows you to do is, if you want to, you can activate it, and when you activate that. We can tell you today how much you would get every month or every year for the rest of your life, regardless of what your balance does. And so if we tell you, you can get $2,000 or $1,000 or whatever, the, it obviously depends on how much money you have in your 403B. But if we were to tell you, we can tell you today that when you retire, starting at age 60, you can receive, let's just say $1,000 a month for the rest of your life, or $3,000 a month for the rest of your life, depending on how much money you have. And so that's pretty cool because even though you're activating the lifetime income benefit rider and you're getting X amount of dollars every month for the rest of your life guaranteed, people ask me, what if my account of 200,000 hits zero? If your account of 200,000 reaches zero at any age, the insurance company writes you a check from their account. It's very powerful. Why would you take anything other than a lifetime pension? Well, why would you do the same thing with your supplemental retirement income as well? This is a very powerful opportunity.
for you to know and be able to budget and live life on your terms during retirement. So what's amazing is how many police officers I talk to who do not have access to a lifetime income benefit rider with their current annuity. And if you do have it, wonderful. But if you don't, or what if you have multiple, you're not gonna have the same purchasing power having all these policies scattered all over the place where you can have them all with one company in one place in one check that continues literally for the rest of your life. Now, people ask me all the time, well, I already have an annuity, but I have a loan on it. Well, depending on who you have it with, we could roll it over to the new uh, annuity, depending on you know who you have it with. Sometimes it requires you to pay it off. Sometimes you have to pay it off and leave some money behind for the interest that was due and so on. The point of it is that every company's different and we can help you get the answers there as well. So at the end, you know, what product out there is best for you? And the answer is, I don't know, because I don't know enough about you to give you that kind of advice. However, if you are interested, we are offering a virtual, meaning Zoom-based, kind of like right now, annuity review to see what you have and what options are out there available to you, because they might be limited by what products are being offered. I told you that a lot of annuity companies are getting rid of products, so it's limited by that whether or not you have the lifetime income benefit rider, whether or not you have loans, whether they're in default or not, and so on. Other factors that play into it, and if you are young enough or you're starting off your career, there might be options available outside of the annuity that gives you that tax-free income I was mentioning in, in the beginning of the presentation as well. And so what I would like to do is simply offer you the opportunity to do nothing more than just simply schedule a free annuity review. Again, it will be based on a Zoom call, kind of like right now. And you can do so by visiting www.annuityreview.us and that we can go ahead and provide you with all the information you need to make an informed decision. You know, time is on your side for a limited amount of time, but after a while, time is against us. And so it's important to make sure that what you have is truly what's best for you as well. Also, this is my contact information in case you have a general question. I'm going to open it up to anybody that wants to ask anything right now, or you can simply call me or text me at 562-237-3683. Are there any questions from anybody that's on the actual webinar at this time? Anybody? You don't have to be shy, but if you are, that's okay too. Um, any questions? I told you I wasn't going to make this long, but I want to give you enough information for you to make an informed decision. Well, if no one has any questions, I, I'm going to email you this presentation in case you had to leave early or whatever the case might be. So if you register for it, you're going to receive it. And all I just want to say at this point is thank you for your time. Uh, you know, again, this is the time to assess where you stand, make adjustments to anything you might have, or simply know that what you're doing is what's truly best for you. And we'll be the first to tell you that as well. But I just really want to say thank you for your time this morning and you know, just ask you that of all the things to so please be safe out there and thank you once again.